Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I have a very interesting video for y'all. <laughs> So I have been trying to tackle this behind me. If you didn't know, in my recent videos I've been putting this cart behind me. This is actually my TBR cart. Um, it's huge, it's as big as a regular bookshelf, but it just has wheels on it. I'm trying to get this lowered because there are so many books on this cart that I have not read yet. So I thought that a very fun way to tackle my TBR is to contact some of my wonderful booktube friends and ask them to pick out any book for me to read on my cart or if it's on Kindle Unlimited or Audible Escape because I'm trying not to spend money with this challenge for myself. They can pick any book for me and I have to read it no matter what. I'm gonna tell y'all about what books I'm gonna read this week and who picked them for me. Okay, so the first person who picked out a book for me to read is Steph from Steph's Romance Book Talk. I absolutely adore Steph. I adore all these ladies in this video in general. I love them a lot. Steph is another romance booktuber. If you aren't already following all of these ladies, like what are you doing? Please go follow all of them. I love them. So please go follow them. One of her favorite authors of all time is Alethea Romig and she talks about her all of the time. So I contacted her and was like, you can pick any book for me to read. I will read it, Steph. She picked out Plus One by Alethea Romig. This is on Audible Escape for me to listen to, and I am so very excited because she talks about Alethea Romig all of the time. I don't actually know what this book is about, so we're gonna read the summary together. So Plus One is the first book in the Light Ones series. Steph told me that this is one of her lighter book series, lighter books, because Alethea Romig is very known for writing the dark romance. He's sexy and confident, the kind of man every woman notices. You know, the one with the to die for body and panty melting smirk. And then there's the way his designer suit drapes over his broad shoulders, but I can't see him that way. He's my boss, technically one of the owners of the company where I work, and definitely not in my league. Men like him don't notice women like me and they don't date them. And I don't date men like him until that one time that I catch him in a compromising position when I'm also in need of a last minute date for a wedding. And then it's not real. It's blackmail. For one weekend, he's my plus one. Beautiful and unattainable. From the moment she walked into my office, from those stunning blue eyes and crazy sensual curves, she's been on my mind. Usually, I flash a million dollar smile and women fall to their knees. Some literally, not her. Then, on the occasion that I agree to let another woman do that, fall to her knees, guess who happens to catch us? It may not be the most conventional way to get her on radar, but I didn't get this far in business without knowing when to seize an opportunity. If this sexy little firecracker with perfectly kissable lips thinks she can blackmail me into attending her cousin's wedding, I'm going to jump at the chance to be her plus one. That's a summary. So it sounds like a fake dating kind of thing, but also there's this longing between both of them that I haven't really addressed before. So that sounds really interesting. Very excited to jump into my first Aletha Romig book. So thank you so much for recommending this one, Steph. Next, I have a book from my lovely friend Nicole from Who Picked This Book. I love Nicole. She is one of my close friends here on booktube and I love all of her videos and we have very similar taste and so she saw that I hadn't read Easy by Tamara Weber so she picked this one for me. I literally have no idea what this book is about. I bought it I think off thrift books one year or something. All it says is he watched her but never knew her until thanks to a chance encounter he became her savior. The attraction between them was undeniable yet the past he'd worked so hard to overcome and the future she'd put so much faith in threatened to tear them apart. Only together could they fight the pain and guilt, face the truth, and find the unexpected power of love. That summary is so very vague. I don't even know if this is adult, new adult, young adult. I have no idea. I'm going in kind of blind into this one, but I'm very intrigued because I've heard really good things about this book and I really trust Nicole's recommendation. Next is a recommendation from my lovely friend Brie from In Love and Words, and she saw that I didn't read this book and immediately told me to read it and that is Autobiography by Christina Lauren. This is like one of the only Christina Lauren books that I have on my TBR cart that I haven't read yet. The only reason why I haven't picked this one up yet is because I've only read one other young adult book by them and it is one of the worst books I've ever read in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> that one is called Sublime and I like I do not like it at all. That's why I've been hesitant to pick this one up because this one is also young adult while their other books that I've loved are adult romances. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this one. Hopefully I love it. I've heard 
amazing, wonderful things. So hopefully it's not gonna be like that other book that they've written that's young adult. I believe this has uh, LGBTQI plus representation in it. 13 years ago, Tanner Scott's family relocated from California to Utah, a move that nudged the bisexual teen temporarily back into the closet. Now with one semester of high school to go and no obstacles between them and out of state college freedom, Tanner plans to coast through his remaining classes and clear out of Utah. But when his best friend Autumn dares him to take Provo High's prestigious seminar where honor roll students diligently toil to draft a book in a seminar, Tanner can't resist defying his better judgment and having a go, if only to prove to Autumn how silly the whole thing is. Writing a book in four months sounds simple. Four months is an eternity. It turns out Tanner is only partly right. Four months is a long time. After all, it takes only one second for him to notice Sebastian Brother, the Mormon prodigy who sold his own seminar novel the year before and who now mentors the class. And it takes less than a month for Tanner to fall completely in love with him. It does sound really really good. I'm hoping that I love this. The cover is absolutely gorgeous. I got the audiobook off of Libby so I'm hesitant but also excited to start this one. Okay so the next one is from my lovely friend Ashley from Ash Heart Books. She actually gifted me this book for my birthday for last year. She raves about this book literally all of the time. The first book she picked when she realized I haven't read it yet that's on my TBR shelf is a Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. She talks about this book constantly and I've been meaning to read it for so long. I even found like the sequel, it's right there. I found the sequel at Half Price Books for like three bucks and had to pick it up and I hadn't even read this one yet. This is a fantasy romance, that's all I know about it. So I'm gonna read the back with y'all. Kingdoms will rise and fall for her. Kat lives disguised as a soothsayer in a traveling circus. She is perfectly content avoiding the danger and destiny of gods and her homicidal mother have saddled her with. That is until Griffin, an ambitious warlord from the magic deprived south, fixes her with a steely gaze and upsets her illusion of safety forever. But not if she can help it. Griffin knows Kat is the kingmaker, the woman who defines the truth through lies. He wants her as a powerful weapon for his newly conquered realm, until he realizes he wants her for much more than her magic. Kat fights him at every turn, but Griffin's fairness, loyalty, and smoldering advances make him hard to resist and leave her wondering if life really does have to be short and lived alone. Fantasy romance. I'm very excited for this. Ashley has been telling me to read this for like over a year at this point and uh, I'm so excited. I even have like her letter in this book that she gifted me with with this book. I am so very excited. So thank you Ashley for picking this one for me. And the last one was picked by my lovely friend Jen from Jen's Bookshelf. <sighs> and she picked a book that I have been kind of hesitant on reading because of the hype in all honesty. <laughs> so last book on this list is a hunky doozy, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. <laughs> I got this for Christmas from my lovely friend Alex like two years ago and I still haven't read it yet because of the hype in all honesty. If a book is really 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 hyped I don't read it like at the same time. I have no idea that's how my brain works. Um, I'm not going to be reading the summary for this one because everyone knows what this book is about so Evelyn Hugo is this very popular Hollywood starlet and she asks this woman Naomi to write her biography I'm pretty sure. So this book is basically her telling her life story to Naomi and she has seven husbands and I also believe she's bisexual if I'm not mistaken. So I'm very interested to see that representation as well in here. It hasn't been on my radar for a while but Jen picked it so I have to read it. I'm very excited for it but I don't know my brain is just like I don't want to read this but then like I do want to because it sounds interesting and everyone loves it. So here are the four books plus plus one that I have to read this week. Um, I'm very excited. I'm gonna get some books off of my TBR and hopefully love some books in the process because I've heard great things about every single one of these books from all of my friends here. So I wanna thank all my friends, Steph, Nicole, Bree, Jen, Ashley for all picking these books out for me. I love every single one of them. So please go check out their channels. They deserve so much love. And I bet all these books are gonna be amazing because they all recommended them to me. I am now 50% of the way through this book. Oh my word. Forget what I said earlier about doubting loving this book because <laughs> I love this book. Yeah it's about our main character named Tanner and he gets in this seminar class where you have to write a book in the span of four months. His TA is the boy who basically won the seminar or the book that he wrote during his seminar like 
got an award and it's like being actually published. He is the TA for the class and that's how they meet. And he's also Mormon. See, I don't know a lot about Mormons. I've never been educated on the subject. And so this is very interesting because I'm learning about something I've never learned about before. It's just so interesting in how the relationships in here are correlating with like religion and how the two like intertwine and how they don't intertwine in this instance and it's like whoa <laughs> i just ended a chapter chapter 13 and there was a quote on there and i was like the last sentence of that chapter just like whew. hmm they're obviously exploring how they feel about each other it's just interesting to see their dynamic specifically sebastian's dynamic because he is so invested in his faith but he knows what he's doing with tanner and his relationship with tanner isn't necessarily a bad thing and he's prayed to the lord about it and prayed about it and he feels no guilt whatsoever about what's going on it's just very interesting because i'm very invested in my christian faith it's just interesting to see how he's invested in his mormon faith and how that relates to the lgbtqia plus community because it is not accepted at all like basically what i've read in this book is that mormons can have those thoughts like they can have thoughts about homosexuality basically but if they act upon it they're basically shunned that is horrible i am loving this writing i am loving the audiobook it is so good like of course with every like with every christina lauren book you wouldn't think that this book is written by two authors you would think it's written by one author but like the way that this book flows is that it's written by one person but it's not it's written by two people like that's insane to me i'm really enjoying this thank you brie for making me read this book because uh, i've read 50 percent of it in the past like couple of hours all today i've read 50 percent of it so i'm very much enjoying it i'm very excited to finish it okay it's later i'm now 75 percent of the way through this far something just happened <laughs> i'm not okay with it i can't talk about it because it's a spoiler but why 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 it has something to do with his best friend if you read this book you know what i mean i don't necessarily think that should have been in the book because don't know how you can like redeem yourself or like this person can redeem themselves i don't know how i feel now i don't know how i feel now wow i just realized i have a zit literally in the middle of my forehead <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of now having mixed feelings because I did not like what just happened. I guess we'll see when I finish the book. <laughs> it is midnight and I have finished autobiography. Oh my word. This book gave me a roller coaster of emotions. I did, I loved this book. It was fantastically written, beautifully written. It's an amazing, beautiful story. I personally don't relate to the two main characters in this book when it comes to their sexuality i am a straight woman one of the boys in here is bisexual and another boy in here is gay and he's trying to come to terms with the fact and actually voice the fact that he is gay because of his faith that is like completely off limits and not allowed at all i related to this book and the fact that how other christians view people in the lgbtqia plus community and how some people view that as a sin and will shun and go against anyone who is in that community when i feel like god loves everyone and accepts every single person this book also just means way more in like the intensity factor and like how important this book is because of the acknowledgement section uh there's also at the end of the audiobook that i listened to there's a little interview between Christina and Lauren and the narrator of Tanner in here. They have like a little 20 minute interview. It was so much fun to listen to. So I really re recommend the audiobook because that's not in the physical copy of the book. But there is in the acknowledgement section like how much this book meant to our two authors. So I believe Christina, she was a guidance counselor in a junior high in Utah. This book takes place in Utah. Like this subject is very near and dear to her heart because a bunch of kids would come to her and basically say how they believe that their parents would rather want a dead child than a gay child and there was even like a suicide in her school because of this when 
she was a counselor. And then this also is really prevalent to Lauren's life because she's also bisexual. And I had no idea that Lauren was bisexual, which is amazing. And she said her story is very similar to Tanner's story. And I don't understand parents who would look down upon or shun their own child because of who they love. They have no choice in who they love. Like zero zilch. They have no choice in who they are attracted to. That is the way God made them. God made them that way. They were born. They were made that way. They have no choice. Do you think they want to be gay and be shunned by everyone and not be loved by everyone and have these stigmas and prejudices like attacking them? Do you think they want that? Do you think they chose that? No. Like it just baffles my mind how some parents just like write their kids off because of their sexuality. Like that's who they are and you don't love your kid because of who they love. Like God loves everyone. Why shouldn't you? <laughs> it's a very passionate subject for me. It has been for a very, very, very long time. So I really adored this book. I think I'm going to give it a 4.5 out of five stars just because I wanted more from the ending like so much. Like I wanted so much more from the ending. And then there was that conflict that happened in the middle of the book. Not like a conflict, but the little thing that happened with Autumn in there. I don't know. I didn't feel like it was needed necessarily. Just about anyone could probably get something out of this. I was just hesitant going into it because I read one young adult book by Christina Lauren and I <laughs> despised it, which was honestly so weird because I've loved like everything else that I've ever read by them. I don't know what it was about that book, but um, I will say I adored this. So Brie, thank you so much for making me read this book because it was amazing. I loved it so very much. Okay, so I am like 40% of the way through A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. There's already been multiple fights, which is amazing. I haven't read a fantasy romance in a while. It's kind of like a hate to love thing. She is like this magical being that only exists once every 200 years called the Kingmaker. She has so many different powers. She can like turn invisible. She can take powers from other people and then use it herself. Griffin, who is like the beta of the realm, his sister just became queen because he conquered the king before them. So he put his sister on the throne. He ends up seeing her one day when she's working in a traveling circus because she has been in hiding for a very long time because she's trying to escape someone. He sees her one day and knows exactly who she is and so he kidnaps her. So <laughs> that's what it's about. And it's a hate to love, even though he actually really cares about her and she's just very snarky. I really love the um, banter so far. I really love it. Apparently this is a three book series. I didn't know. And then Ashley also told me that there's going to be a spinoff series about one of the other guys in like their little friend group thing because Griffin has these three other men with him that are like his like people. How do you describe that? Like his right hand man. Like <laughs> they fight with him. There you go. They're really funny. Their banter is pretty cool. So I'm excited if they get their own book too, but I am thoroughly invested in this book. The writing is so good. I am loving this writing. I am loving Kat's like just snarky comments and her narration is amazing. I really love it. I am sucked into this audiobook. I started it today and I'm already 40% of the way through and I started it late today. Really enjoying this and uh, Ashley has not steered me wrong yet so I'm very glad you picked this book for me because I am thoroughly enjoying it. 50% of the way through this. We're in my kitchen. I just baked some chocolate cookies. Listen to this, oh my word. The banter and the longing, just like the pent up attraction towards one another is off the charts, slow burn. 50% of the way, they haven't like gotten together yet. I'm waiting for it. I'm anxiously waiting for it. I'm super excited for when they're going to. There was just a dragon in this book. <laughs> Didn't know that was gonna happen. I'm just, I'm loving this. I'm loving it. Okay, sorry for my crusty, dusty look. I literally just woke up, but I'm listening to this 60% of the way through, and I think I have a theory. I have a theory, and I think I'm right, and I am never right in these kinds of situations. I don't want to spoil it, but it has to do with who she really is. I think it's right. I think it's right. I'll keep you updated. I don't know if it's going to be revealed in this book, but I think I'm right. I finished it. Oh my word. I loved this. One of the best fantasy romance books I have ever read. I'm giving this five stars. 
and it's a trilogy and so there's two other books in the series i have book number two and it's i think the hold from the library just came in so after i do this whole video i have to go read the sequel my theory was not revealed yet but there were like hints at it through the book um but she never said it so my theory isn't correct or incorrect yet so i have to wait to read the other books to see this romance was so investing i love griffin's family i love his men i love his relationship and the way that he treats her if you love fantasy romance please read this this also has aspects of mythology in here because she is the goddaughter of poseidon cerberus you know hades is dog cerberus is in here i love cerberus and he's not even in here for more than like 10 pages <laughs> I grew up loving mythology, so I don't think it's a surprise that I loved this book so much. The mythology is not a heavy topic of it, but there's like gods and them worshiping gods and just like the term, some of the terminology is very similar. But like, if you're not into mythology, like you'll still love this book because there's not all that much in there. I just love the little things here and there about mythology in here. And oh my word, am I excited for the next book. So yes, I'm giving this five stars. <laughs> I'm fully invested in this relationship like fully invested and I can't wait to read about them in the next two books so thank you so much Ashley for recommending this book to me you've recommended it to me for years like she got me this book for my birthday last year and I still hadn't read it until this point so um thank you for constantly reminding me to read this book and picking this book for me to read because I ended up loving it <laughs> Sorry if you hear noises in the background. I don't live alone, so there are people talking. <laughs> I am now 50% of the way through Plus One by Alethea Romig. I'm really enjoying this. So basically this woman catches her boss or someone who was of higher rank than her in her company fraternizing with someone from the company even though they're not supposed to and she's a part of HR and so she's like I really need a date to my cousin's wedding and my mom won't let it down if I don't bring a date and I don't know anyone to bring so I'm gonna blackmail you to come to this wedding with me but little does she know that her boss the guy that she caught has actually been like lusting over her for like three years and she's never like insinuated that she wants anything else even though she does she takes him to her hometown and introduces him to her parents her grandma her grandma is super duper funny she's like a kind of like a dirty old lady <laughs> i'm really enjoying it it's very steamy very steamy i'm really liking the writing style and i'm really loving the narration both of the narrators are great it's off of audible escape so if you have audible escape it's on there i haven't read a lot of like fake dating or i haven't wanted one in a while at least it's gonna come to a point where like he's gonna have to reveal his feelings for her because they obviously like really like each other but they don't think that the other one really wants to be in full term relationship with each other i can't wait till the <laughs> reveal is dropped and everyone knows that everyone likes everyone <laughs> so i'm very much enjoying this i finished plus one by alethea romig i ended up really really enjoying this one it's just like a really really short fun fake dating romance where there is previous pining i really enjoyed it the steamy scenes were top notch the author knows what she's writing that's for sure i am definitely intrigued to listen to the rest of the series especially since they are on audible escape i believe the rest of them are i don't know i have to go check but i'm really interested in reading the rest of this companion series and i'm very curious to see who the next books are going to be about and if we've already met them or not steph has definitely definitely made me more intrigued about this author because i really did enjoy her writing i believe Steph's favorite book or one of her favorite books is Insidious by this author and she had a whole live show about it too but I don't do well with scary stuff <laughs> and I heard it's kind of thriller-esque. I think I'm gonna steer clear of those ones but um I would be more interested to get into her like darker romances that's for sure but I definitely definitely enjoy this one. I'm going to give it a four out of five stars just because it's not like my favorite thing of all time. I just like, I really enjoyed my time reading this. I know I didn't have a lot of footage for this book specifically. That's just because I was very invested in this audiobook and I read it like 2.5 or 2.3 times speed. And so this like seven hour audiobook just flew by for me and I was so sucked into the story that I kind of forgot to update. <laughs> I almost forgot to do my 50% check-in because I was so 
invested. I looked down at my phone and I just passed the 50% mark and I was like, oh wait, I gotta update. I was honestly just so invested that I didn't want to update. I just wanted to keep on reading. Thank you so, so much Steph for recommending this book to me. I definitely have an author that I'm more intrigued by and I have a series I cannot wait to finish. <laughs> I started easy by Tamara Weber. I'm only on chapter three um, and I'm flying through this. The chapters are very short and I absolutely love that my dogs are moving. I hear you, what you want? I had to come on here before my 50% update to let y'all know that there is a big trigger warning for attempted sexual assault, obviously not with the hero and heroine, but with somebody else. So beware about going into this literally first chapter. So if you're triggered by something like that, I don't, know if this book is the best thing for you. This girl is in that situation in the first chapter and our hero ends up saving her from it. That's the whole reason how she like knows who this guy is because he saved her from in a very unfortunate situation. Also I had no idea that this was a new adult book so this takes place in college which I haven't read one in a very long time. So far the book is very true to what college campuses and what college life is like. There was like talking about classes and seating arrangements and classes and yes in college we still have assigned seating sometimes. I thought that was a very cool tidbit to add in there because people think that since you're in college you don't have assigned seating which in over 50% of my classes I've had to have assigned seating so. Okay I am officially 50% of the way through Easy by Tamara Weber. This book gives me a lot of Wait For You by Jennifer L. Armentrout vibes. If you've read that one, that was my favorite book, I think like last year or the year before that. There is a lot of talk of sexual assault. Again, if you're triggered by that, I don't think I recommend reading this book. There's a few scenes and um, instances where the main character learns how to defend herself in that situation so that was pretty cool because I've never actually read a book where sexual assault is addressed but then they also make sure to go to a self-defense class or find ways to prevent something like that happening again or try to be as safe as possible like to learn the ways that Hopefully something like that never happens again. Man is our main character hero, angsty. <laughs> He's like the angsty, like bad boy character. Also, there is kind of like a mystery as to who one of the characters are in this book. I'm trying to be very vague because I don't want to spoil anything about this book, but I knew who this person was from the beginning. So <laughs> didn't surprise me when like the reveal happened. There's one character I cannot stand. He is the guy who tried to assault our main character woman. I just want to punch him in the face. <laughs> I hate, I hate men like that. Like grinds my gears so much that they think they're so high and mighty in there they, that they're entitled to any woman they look at no matter if she says no or not. And it makes me just so mad. <laughs> it makes me so mad. Cause there are guys like that out in the world. I also very much dislike her ex-boyfriend. There was just a scene with him in here that really made me mad too. There's this one scene where she tells our hero that hey, I don't really wanna go any further with the way that we're going physically right now. And he's like, okay, cool whatever and he just keeps kissing her and not going farther than she asked like he was being very respectful of what she wanted she said how she could never have said something like that to her ex-boyfriend because if she ever said anything he would stop everything completely and then basically get mad at her because she didn't want to go any further and i was so mad like there are men out there like that who get pissed at you because you don't want to go any farther and think that they're entitled to go as far as they came with you every single time that they're with you because they're your boyfriend. Just because you're someone's significant other does not give you the right to always have a home run every single time you're with them. No means no, even if y'all are dating. Oh, I can't stand how there are people out there like that in the world. Anyway, uh, this book is obviously discussing topics that grind my gears. <laughs> I really want to read the second half of the book and see where this story goes. I finally finished Easy by Tamara Weber. Wow, I didn't think that this book dealt with sexual assault in that big of a manner. If you are triggered by it at all, do not read this book. That's the main subject in here. I really did like the romance. I liked how protective Lucas was, how much he cared and made 
sure that our main character woman was as equipped as possible to make sure she never went through something like that ever again. And that's how boyfriends should be. They should help you become confident in yourself and confident in going out into the world because some people are afraid to go certain places because of what happened to them. That's also addressed in this book. There's a specific place she won't go to anymore because of what happened. I think I'm gonna give it a four stars. I feel like there were certain things in this book I wished would have been like talked about more or addressed more when involving like Lucas and his story. I wanted to get to know him more. This might be a series. Is it a series? Someone let me know. It might be, or it's a companion series. I don't know. I really liked her best friend. At the beginning, I was very iffy on Erin, her best friend, just because there was like a party at the beginning and her friend was encouraging her to drink a lot because she just got out of a breakup. I was like, ooh, is this friend not gonna be good? But then I started thinking like, that's how a lot of friends are. I personally don't drink, so I can't relate to that, but I bet a bunch of friends are like that, where they're like, you need a night off, you need to get shwasted because you're going through some crap, so, uh, I'm your DD, I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna take care of you. That's what Aaron did. So when Jacqueline told Aaron like what was going on, a part of me wondered, is she gonna even believe her? Cause there are books that I've read where the friend doesn't believe them in what happened. I was completely wrong with my assumption of Aaron at the beginning. She was an amazing friend. She was super duper supportive. She's the main reason why she got into the Taekwondo defense lessons and I loved her for that. And I just loved her as a friend in here. She was super duper duper supportive and caring. I really enjoyed this. So thank you so much, Nicole, for recommending it to me. This is definitely a hard hitter book. So if you wanna read something kind of emotional, um, this one's for you. <laughs> Sorry if you see remnants of a face mask on my face. I just did a charcoal face mask and I think there's still pieces on there I haven't taken off yet. I am on page 127, I think. So Monique is asked by Evelyn to basically write her biography whenever she dies, like to publish it when Evelyn dies, to tell her story. And she wants the story to be about the real love of her life because Monique's like, you've had these seven husbands, how about the book is about your one true love out of this instance? Right when we met the person, who's the true love of her life? I knew that it was that person. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I love this character. And a scene just happened that I have to tab, if you know what tabs mean for me. <laughs> I just had to tab a scene, or I'm about to tab a scene because it literally happened one second ago in my audiobook. I am very excited to read about their love story. I'm only a third of the way through this book. I am very, very, very sucked into this world, this story, this audiobook. It's very good. And it's just been taking me a while to read this. I've read, I've been trying to read this book for like over a week now. That's probably my fault because I tried to read it physically at first and it just wasn't working for me. And then I bought the audiobook and it clicked finally. So I'm going to listen to the audiobook and play a fun little game on my phone or finish knitting my scarf or just do something. I'm loving the audiobook. Hi. <laughs> it's actually been a couple weeks since. I have finished this book. I filmed a reaction to the ending and what I thought about it when I finished this book. I'm gonna be very honest with y'all. I am not going to be posting that footage in this video. I was having a horrible time with my mental health when I was filming those clips and I was not myself. And I do not feel like posting those clips and having depressed me in a video. I don't want to see that. You don't want to see that. I don't really want that to be, like my reaction to this book is not, should not be like depressed Avery. Like I have a depression, I get it. But like, I don't want that to be in a video where I was really happy about this book, but my emotions are not showing that because of how horrible my mental health was. We're gonna not post those clips today and we're gonna, I'm gonna try and remember <laughs> what I loved about this book. <laughs> so, um, I ended up giving this book five stars. I read this a couple weeks ago, so bear with me <laughs> what I remember. I talked to Jen after I read this book. We have a bit of different feelings about it, I guess. Um, I actually loved her, like, the great love of Evelyn Hugo's life. I loved that character, and Jen did not. So, I'm very curious, without spoiling the book, so people in the comments who have not read the book yet can read the comments without getting spoiled, um, did you also love the great love of Evelyn Hugo's life? Like, I would love to know. I honestly loved Taylor Jenkins Reid's 
writing style. It was amazing. Her writing was beautiful. I honestly thought that Evelyn Hugo was alive. I get why people say that all the time. I kept forgetting that this person isn't real. <laughs> She's not real. You love her at times and you hate her at times because she does some pretty horrible stuff. And the thing that was the plot twist was not what I thought the plot twist was gonna be. Overall, I loved this and I'm very sorry I don't have more to talk about about this book. I don't want to post those clips, y'all. I do not look like myself, I do not act like myself, and on this channel I want to be me. And those clips were not me. Needless to say, I know this section of the video is very, very short. I'm sorry, Jen. Um, but I've talked to Jen about this. She knows that I loved it. And I'm very happy that I finally, finally read this book and finally get all the hype surrounding Evelyn Hugo. I loved the audiobook. It was amazing. I want this to become a movie so badly. Like, I want it to be a movie so badly. You've watched this video, you know what? I rated certain books. I thought this experience was pretty great. I think I gave every single book four stars or higher. So, my friends have amazing taste in books. Again, thank you Ashley, Nicole, Bree, Steph, and Jen for recommending these books to me. I love y'all so much. Um, please go check out their channels if you haven't yet. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you want to. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye.